Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back. My name is Nadia and Sands. This of course is learn how to edit stuff. And today we are talking about how to do smooth zooms. You're always asking me, how do I do smooth zooms? Well, I'm gonna teach you today in both Adobe Premiere and Adobe After Effects. Smooth zooms can be used for a variety of different things. When somebody coughs, <coughs> you can zoom in really fast and make it funny. Somebody tells a funny joke, <laughs> eh, you can zoom in and make it funny. Or if you wanted to do screen pumps, you're always asking about screen pumps too. Yeah, it, it all works kind of in that same family. So smooth zooms have more effect than just a smooth zoom. Anyways, I'm gonna show you a couple different ways to do it. I personally like to work non-destructively, which means I like to put my zooms on an adjustment layer and not directly onto the layer itself because if you wanna swap out the media underneath that layer, if you have it on the layer, then you kinda of have to like copy and paste the keyframes over and it can get kinda of messy. So I'm gonna show you guys how to do both destructive and non-destructive in Premiere and in After Effects. Open up Adobe Premiere because that's where we're starting first and we're starting right now. All right, kiddos, Adobe Premiere is open and I've got a blank 1080 composition open and I am first going to start out by dropping a girl with her dog onto my timeline. This dog is making a very funny face and that's what I wanna zoom into, obviously. So there are two different methods of doing this like I mentioned in the intro. One is destructive and one is non-destructive. We are going to start with destructive first, but both are going to involve going over to your effects and typing in transform and dropping a distort transform effect onto your layer or onto an adjustment layer. We're starting with the layer first. And what I'm gonna do is start off by adding a scale and position keyframe, going over five keyframes, scaling this up. Whoop, doing some funky stuff and I'm just gonna reposition my position. And the reason that I like to use transform is because it allows us to use motion blur. So if we uncheck this box that says use composition shutter angle, and now we can crank up this motion blur. Uh, it's kind of done some weird things to my position for some reason. Uh, so now I'm gonna reposition this. It might be a bug in Premiere, I have no idea. But basically we have now added a zoom with a motion blur. And now this doesn't look very smooth. It looks very robotic and kind of just like eh. But what we can do is come in here and zoom in, highlight our first two keyframes right click on that guy, go to temporal interpolation and set it to ease out. And then we can highlight our last two keyframes. Same thing, temporal interpolation, ease in. And the way that I remember it is ease out of the gate and into the finish line, which will give you a little curve that looks something like this. Uh, it's more of an S curve, you can see on the scale, but the velocity is kind of this upside down U. And that's what you're looking for when you want to get a smooth zoom. And now when I play this, it's a lot smoother and it looks a lot better. And what I can simply do is just take these two keyframes and kind of drag them in closer together. And now it will go a little bit quicker. And that is how you do a smooth zoom in destructively inside of Adobe Premiere. And the reason that it's destructive is because it's contained on the layer itself. But if I delete this transform, and I go back to our beginning and I add an adjustment layer by coming to this new item button, going to adjustment layer, and then dragging and dropping that adjustment layer onto my timeline. I can now add the transform property onto the adjustment layer. And I can do the same thing. Set a scale and position, one, two, three, four, five, and we're gonna scale up and we're gonna readjust our position, looking pretty good. And we're gonna go and check to make sure our motion blur is looking good. Didn't screw up this time for whatever reason. And now I'm gonna do the same thing. Right click, temporal interpolation, ease out of the gate, and we are easing into the finish line. And now, ladies and gentlemen, I have a smooth zoom that definitely looks better on an adjustment layer. The non-destructive addition of the smooth zoom looks a lot better than the destructive for whatever reason. Reason. And the reason that I like to do it on an adjustment layer is because I can now go in and change out this photo if I wanted to. And I'm just gonna scale it up just a little bit so it fills my frame. And then the only thing I have to do is actually go to my last position keyframe and just adjust the position. And now I have added in a different photo using this same smooth zoom effect. And it is non-destructive because I can just delete that adjustment layer. And now I have retained my two original photos underneath my adjustment layer. So to me, the non-destructive way of doing it is a lot better overall. And what you can do is save the zoom in as a preset very simply by coming up here to transform, the transform property on the adjustment layer, right clicking on that and going to save preset and calling this something that you'll remember, five frame zoom in. Anchor to in point is what you wanna select for this. Click okay. And now I can just completely delete this adjustment layer off of there add in a new adjustment layer, come over to my effects and underneath my presets, there it is, five frame zoom in. I can just now drag and drop that onto my adjustment layer and I have saved that as a preset. If I got rid of the photo underneath, again, all I have to do is adjust the final resting position of my position. I know that was confusing, but you understand what I'm saying. And now 
I have saved that out as a preset and I can do this for any layer underneath and add whatever I want. You can do a zoom in, you can do a zoom out, you can do a zoom left and right and just save all of those out as presets for you to use later. And that is just a nice way to develop a catalog of smooth zooms in a direction for all of your videos. If you guys are used to doing a zoom in on something specific, maybe like you have a background like I do and you always wanna zoom in to the nano leafs sponsored and you just keep zooming in over and over to the nano leafs, you can save that out as a preset so you don't have to redo the work over and over and over again. No, but seriously, Nano Leaf, if you want to like throw a sponsorship my way, I, I love the lights. I bought these myself, but you can send me more. Hey, I'm not going to say no. All right, we've done the smooth zoom in Adobe Premiere, both destructive and non-destructive. And now it's time, kiddos, to go over into After Effects. And I personally think that it looks better in After Effects and it's easier to manipulate because you can use your graph editor and really dial in the velocity of your scale and positions, both destructively and non-destructively. Little hint for you, I kind of do a combination of both when I do my zooms in After Effects, and I'll show you why. Super uh, legitimate reason, but you might think that I'm kind of crazy. Anyway, uh, so I'm going to start a new composition in After Effects, 1920 by 1080, 10 seconds long. Nothing really crazy going on. And of course, I'm going to drop this stock photo of the girl with her dog and just rescale this a little bit to fit position. And now we are basically going to do the exact same thing. I'm gonna hit control spacebar, which is gonna bring up the video copilot effects console. Link in the video description below to download. It is free, it is the best. And I'm going to type in transform, click on that. And now it has added a transform property directly onto my layer. Again, we're working destructively. And I'm gonna come over a little bit of ways, set a scale and position keyframe, one, two, three, four, five keyframes. And now I will scale in and I will readjust my position as we did in Adobe Premiere. Hit my layer, hit U on the keyboard to show my animated properties. And then I will just highlight all my keyframes and hit F9 to easy ease. And that will automatically set the ease in and ease out values as indicated by this nice little S curve in my graph editor. And again, uncheck use composition shutter angle and crank that bad boy up if you want some crazy motion blur. And now we have added a smooth zoom in Adobe After Effects using basically the same method. And I don't know, another bug in After Effects. I have to change this from bilinear to bicubic in order for the motion blur to go away before the actual animation starts, but whatever. You deal with what you have access to. And now we've done the exact same thing and I can shrink the time in between those keyframes to make it even snappier and faster. And if I wanted to animate out, I can just copy and paste those keyframes in reverse order, just like so. And now we are snapping in and snapping out. So if you wanted to use this method to do your screen pumps, uh, this is what I was talking about earlier in the introduction, right? We can just now copy and paste these a bunch and now you're kind of doing screen pumps with a kick drum or whatever or zooming into something ridiculous and you can just kind of copy and paste that over and over and over again. If you wanted to save out this as a preset in After Effects, all you've got to do is click on transform, come up to animation and go to save animation preset. And we're gonna click save and After Effects is gonna yell at me and I don't know what's going on. So I have to save this to a different folder. I'm going to save it to my desktop then I'm going to navigate to my C drive, then to my program files, then to Adobe, then to After Effects 2020, then to support files, then to presets, then to behaviors. And now I will just simply drag and drop that preset that I made, save to my desktop, drag it into this folder, hit continue. Now I can save it, I don't know why. And if I come up to my effects and presets, right click on that guy and go to refresh list, I now, can search for few frame zoom in. And if I deleted this transform property right off my layer, I can now drag and drop that onto my layer. And I now have saved that as a preset in After Effects. And this is cool. It will uh, automatically add the preset wherever your playhead is. So if I drop this in at one second, it will add those keyframes to the one second mark. So for one second, it's doing nothing, then it's zooming in. And that is how you save it out as a preset in Adobe After Effects. Don't worry guys, the same is true if you add an adjustment layer. By coming up to layer, new adjustment layer, I can now drop that preset onto my adjustment layer and it is non-destructive. So if I wanted to get rid of this adjustment layer, I haven't done anything to my actual layer and it has retained its core values. Now, earlier I said I like to do a combination of destructive and non-destructive in After Effects specifically, and here is the reason why. On the transform properties, if I right click on position, I cannot separate the dimensions, which usually if this was not grayed out, you can separate the position dimensions into X and Y coordinates individually, which will give you significantly more control over your image. And you can't do that in the transform effect, but you can do it on the layer itself. Let me demonstrate very quickly. 
I'm going to delete this adjustment layer and I'm going to add a new adjustment layer into the mix and onto that adjustment layer, I'm going to drop another transform and I'm just going to add scale. So one, two, three, four, five on the scale and I'm just gonna push in uniformly uh, right into this nice elbow crease and I will show you why in just a second. So you on my keyboard to show my animated properties, highlight these keyframes, hit F9 to smooth it. And now what this will allow me to do is actually add a slightly more aggressive S curve or whatever curve I want to my scale. So maybe I want it to just immediately scale up and then just kind of ease into the end there. And that's what it's doing. So now what I can do is I can actually add the position values onto my layer by adding a position keyframe coming over and then positioning this where I want to position it. And now I can right click on position and go to separate dimensions, which will separate it into X and Y coordinates individually. And now I can highlight those keyframes, hit F9 on the keyboard, and now I can micro adjust what is happening with my Y position, which is my vertical position. So with Y position selected, come over to my graph editor, and now I can kind of mirror the curve that I gave my scale uh, and the X curve, the X position as well. Uh, we're gonna mirror it in the opposite direction just like so. And now I can kind of really play with the curve of my animation. And I know it's not perfect and you guys are gonna wanna mess around with this more than I am currently messing around with it, but the individual control over the X and the Y position is actually really huge, especially if you're doing anything with motion design. If you're just zooming in on a video or doing some screen pumps, you don't really need to do it this way. You don't need that much control. Just the general smoothing of your S curve is gonna be plenty for you guys. But that is basically in a nutshell, how you get smooth zooms in both Adobe Premiere and Adobe After Effects. Whew. I hope none of that was confusing for you. All right, now go. Go off and make your smooth zooms and your memes and your whatever and the nano leaves. We're zooming into the nano leaves because we want a nano leaf sponsorship. Anyways, thank you so much for watching this video, guys. I really do appreciate it. If you have not already subscribed to my channel, I would really like to prompt you to subscribe to my channel. I do videos for free, and all I ask of you in return is to simply click the subscribe button and maybe leave a nice comment in the comment section below or a thumbs up if you'd like. Also, in the video description, you will find a couple links. One is to the video copilot effects console. It is free. I highly recommend it for you after effectsers. And the other one is a link tree, which will take you to my discord, all of my social media, a bunch of tools and plugins that I would recommend for you to get to kind of amplify your post-production game. All of that stuff is in the link tree. So click around down there if you'd like, because this video is over. Thank you so much for watching this episode of Learn How to Edit Stuff. May your zooms be smooth and I'll see you in the next one.